it feels so nice to get back out at the range again. Contrary to these crazy winds that we've been having, um, it's actually fairly warm and it's very comfortable. Uh, anyway, it's nice to be back with you. So one of the positive things that happened in the last few years when I was real sick, I didn't have the ability to really get up and move around a lot. I was stuck on my back and uh, healing for quite a while. And uh, I actually had time to do a lot of things when I felt like doing things that I hadn't for quite some time. One of those things I wanted to explore was additive manufacturing. I wanted to get a 3D printer. And I did get a 3D printer. And uh, I was hoping it would work well within my industry, the firearms industry. And I've got to tell you right now, it has not disappointed. So after doing a little bit of homework and trying to teach myself how to use this thing, uh, the first thing that I printed was a projectile for my can cannon, for my X products can cannon. Something to launch that wasn't a can. It came out really well. The size is nice. It looks good. It's quite rugged. And um, it was a success. Absolutely a success, especially for a first print. The next thing I printed was a paperweight. I wanted something that looked like brass knuckles, but only plastic. So, this is the result of that. A little bit of paint, gives it that metallic look. Just plastic, how cool is that? Then I wanted to get a little bit closer to our industry. So I printed some pistol grips for, my, for one of my rifles. It even has a trap door. It actually fits quite well, quite snug and secure. Printed it from a different material. Snaps and locks in. It's quite rugged, and a lot of that you get to choose in the settings anyway and uh, fits the guns really good. But there had to be a little bit more. There had to be something else that I could do that would uh, scratch that itch a little bit better. And scratch that itch we did. I knew that it probably wouldn't be super practical, but that's never stopped me in the past. Um, but I thought that I would try my hand at printing with PLA a sound suppressor for my little pocket rifle. It's lightweight, extremely lightweight, um, small, and uh, that's kind of the theme of the rifle itself, lightweight and small. And uh, I thought I would bring it out today with you and try it out to see how it works. So let's start out with a few rounds of good old American Eagle. Most people have this stuff lying around. It's typically pretty fast, even out of that short barrel. But we'll see if that PLA suppressor reduces the sound at all. and reduce the sound it does. Uh, you still have that crack, that supersonic crack, um, but I found in the past that federal premium gold medal target stuff usually is below that subsonic level, somewhere around a thousand feet per second out of this barrel length, uh, but the rifle can be a little bit finicky with it. So let's try a few rounds of this stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected, and I know this will shock you, but the rifle could stand for a good cleaning anyway, so um, that isn't going to help it. But again, I'm not surprised by that performance with that ammo. It's nice and quiet, but it doesn't cycle that particular rifle very well. But something that typically does is the Gemtech. The Gemtech uh, subsonic ammo tends to cycle really good. So I think between this and uh, maybe cleaning it before I bring it out again next time, and maybe I'll throw a sight on it too, that would help. Although it seems to be pretty darn accurate uh, just looking through the scope mount as it is. Uh, but I just couldn't wait to try the suppressor to see how it affected the decibel reduction. And it seems to be affecting it really well. Let's hit a few with the Gemtech stuff. definitely better and wow was that quiet so yeah it works <laughs> and it works really really well compared to uh, a lot of the more proper sound suppressors correct ones metal ones ones made out of the uh, right material um, with the right baffle stack with proper technology um, this thing's doing a pretty darn good job 
Now, of course, there are going to be issues with it. This is probably not going to have any longevity uh, over time unless I'm very, very, very careful with it not to get it too hot because the melting point of this stuff is quite low uh, compared to aluminum and the other metals that you use in the suppressor industry. This is still just PLA and the beauty of it is the ability to form and shape it, but that's because it heats up liquefies and cools down really good and gets strong again. If we heat it up and liquefy it again, I think we can both guess what exactly what's going to happen. So let's discuss the elephant in the room before the kid next to you stands up and runs to the teacher and says, hey, that guy back there is, is making a silencer. That's not legal. It's absolutely legal. I'm a Title II manufacturer, which means I am licensed to make NFA firearms and devices, such as machine guns, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, any other weapons, and silencers, sound suppressors. But I'm no different than you are. As an individual, you can also make sound suppressors under federal law in this country. You just have to file a Form 1, which is very similar to the transfer form you fill out when you purchase one of these new, any NFA item or device, wait for it to be returned, approved, and then you can make your own sound suppressor. So it's not anything that you have to belong to a special club to do, kind of like the Post 86 machine guns. There does seem to be a lot of innovation out there already uh, for firearms, firearm devices, sound suppressors, things like that, uh, that's available online. I can't really speak for any of it as to how well it works or how accurate any of them are. I'm way, way too new with this stuff. I'm, I'm just making starter things at this point. This, uh, this suppressor is as advanced as anything I've made so far, and uh, it is a tube with some baffles in it made through additive manufacturing. Nothing super special, but so far it seems to work pretty darn good. I'm anxious to see the industry of additive manufacturing evolve at an equivalent pace to what it's been doing over the last decade. You see, this isn't anything new. This is not new technology. This is new technology to be affordable for everybody to have at home. But 20 or 25 years ago, I was using additive manufacturing. Uh, it was called rapid prototyping. So when we would design a product for the firearms industry, we would send it to a company who had a rapid prototype machine. They would output the file in additive manufacturing with a material real similar to this PLA and uh, a, a couple days later they would have a product in hand for me to try to test to check the fit to check the alignment to check the tolerances and if it looked good then we could go to production and send it to the machines that cut the metal um, now as you know 3d printing that that term has replaced the term additive manufacturing or rapid prototyping and not only do they seem to be fairly common in a lot of homes but extremely common in a lot of schools so the next generation will have a whole lot more to add than anything that my knuckle drag self can do with this machine and i can't wait to see what it is that they come up with not only for techniques but for materials i'm already seeing people using uh titanium composites uh, with 3D printing, with additive manufacturing, and, and items like this sound suppressor could very easily be made on a machine like that and probably have some serious advantages over things that are made with traditional machining uh, due to the complex angles that you can do with additive manufacturing that you just couldn't machine. Some, some things just wouldn't be possible. So this has the potential to go right to the moon and the more people there are working and trying it, the more we're all going to learn together moving forward. So it's a, it's a pretty exciting thing. So I'm going to put a few more rounds down range with this thing. I'm going to do my best to keep that barrel cool. No giggle switch on this thing. And um, I think it's probably going to last a while. But I've been known to be kind of rough on things, or, or so I've been told. So no guarantee as to how long it will be around. But I'm going to have fun with it while it is here. Are there going to be issues moving forward? Yeah, anything that's made of plastic that has plastic threads um, could have some continuity problems and... It's just for fun and it's just to learn as far as, as this project is at this point. But I think both of those things have a place here. I hope you enjoyed this trip to the range with me and a little bit of learning with additive manufacturing or 3D printing. If you did, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe, subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Don't forget to check out our merch uh, that Bunker Branding has available. We've got some really cool t-shirt designs and they have lightning fast service and, and they're really good people. Thank you for sticking with me during this long downtime. It feels so great to be back here at the range, and, and I'm glad that you waited around. I really did. And I'm going to do my best to make it up to you by providing some interesting content moving forward. 
Till next time, have fun and be safe.